Um, hello everyone, my name is Nicola Hogan and I am the Space Environmental and Sustainable Officer here at Goldsmiths. I'm joined today by Margaret Jennings who is a second year BA Fine Arts student. Um, Margaret is finished her second year and she's about to enter her third year. Margaret has made environmentalism and consumerism and tackling waste and looking at waste differently. She has made that the center of her of her artwork and she's done an amazing job in it so far. Um, last year she uh, created the Living, Taking and Giving Back Library, our participatory experience. And uh, it was a huge success. It got wonderful reviews uh, across all of London, not just here at Goldsmiths and other universities. Um, and everyone now widely recognises Margaret as the lady who understands consumerism and is getting people to think about how they consume. And more importantly, once they do consume, uh, what they throw away and why are they throwing it away and could they reuse it for something else? Could they give it to somebody else to reuse? Could it be repurposed in a different way? So um, that's Margaret Jennings. Uh, Margaret's about to give her presentation now. You. Um, you're welcome, Margaret. Welcome. Hi, I'm Margaret Jennings and very pleased to be with you. Welcome. Welcome to the Living, Taking and Giving Back Library. I am studying art, I'm studying fine art, I'm studying at Goldsmiths and Goldsmiths is set in London, South East London, very urban setting and I'm really lucky, I'm at Goldsmiths, renowned for its conceptual art and they've just let me do what I want to do basically and um, this is a conceptual piece of work and I can say that my work is going into a socially engaged practice that's to say I think I could describe it as a broad in a broad stroke of bringing communities together it's participatory it's community driven and um, I think it's to do very much with what's happening in the nowness of how we live that makes it perhaps activist certainly political in this piece of work the living taking and giving back library it's to do with obviously our carbon input, what we're doing to the environment and perhaps the shock of moving into the Anthropocene. It is a piece of work, artwork, and it's deliberately set up to entice. And this first frame that you're looking at is the first Living Taking Gimbat Library that I devised, but the story behind it is really interesting, I think. In the first year, when I was an undergraduate here, um, and I'm still studying here, I wanted to meet other students, and I noticed everybody was buying their own electric kettle. And somehow I thought, well, it's a bit of a shame, because if we, not only from the power point of view and the waste of electricity, but we could all come together and use the same electric kettle and that would bring us together. So not only save energy, but bring us together as well. And in having a cup of tea or a cup of coffee together, then um, we'd get to know our, one another. So I actually found an electric kettle on the campus and I created a common room, or at least a common area. There wasn't much space for it, but somehow or other with a notice board, eventually a refrigerator that I found on the campus, then a microwave. Um, quite apart from the electric kettle, uh, then a coffee maker. Um, there was a sort of community atmosphere set up around things that had been thrown out and it brought people together. And also on the notice board we could stick any information we had about where to buy organic food, for example, and also where to shop um, that was fair trade orientated. And we'd pass information to one another about the best ways to, if you like, in inverted commas, save the planet by what we buy. However, I was still continuing and continued right the way throughout that year to, if you like, curate. Curate stuff from the skip. It shocked me what I was finding in the skip. And though um, I don't hold anybody really responsible for what they throw out in one way because there's all sorts of reasons why people throw things out there might be very good reasons why people throw out really good stuff maybe because they're international students they couldn't manage to take it back home with them 
Um, and there might be other reasons why people throw things out. And they might be very good in their own right for their own reasons. But the fact is a whole lot of stuff is being thrown out. And I started to feel, and I have for a long while actually, felt guilty almost about what other people throw out. Also, being curiosity driven, I wanted to use this stuff somehow. I found it visually interesting, texturally interesting, and it got piled up on my desk. And so this is the story of what happened to create the first of this living, taking and giving back library and how it progressed in different parts of the country and also, I think, almost internationally now. So, next frame. So, the library contents um, have been gathered over a period of year, over a year. At that stage, they were gathered over a period of year. And um, I was curating from the skips. These were random throw out pieces, but, and also in random throw out places, not only in the skip, but also in dustbins and just left lying around. But it's all on the campus. Yeah, like a snapshot, this is true, and um, snapshots, albeit taken at different times, but um, the living, li the living library, let's call it from now, actually um, gathered together all the stuff that was being thrown out on the campus right under our noses. And if I gathered it together as I was, then what did it represent? So I started to think about how I was going to arrange this stuff. How it, would be, how it would actually move from my desk to a library format or even just onto shelves. And the reason that I started to do this was people were taking things from my desk thinking it was okay to take them and also not putting anything back in, the, in its place or telling me they've taken anything. And I didn't know where it had gone and I was looking for it. Pretty frustrating. So I thought I'd create and organise it on shelves so it'd be easier for me to find, but also so I could recognise what would go on missing. And people might be kind enough in an organised state um, to tell me that they had borrowed something. So it looks quite eclectic, and I guess it is, because um, it's all specific things that I've found that I thought would be interesting, not only to myself, but maybe to other people. Even the shelves are actually made from recycled material, light fittings, etc. Uh, and it's absolutely um, very carefully placed one thing next to the other to entice people into, the, into usage of it. Um, the uh, goldsmith sign that you see on the left hand side is actually from a book that had been thrown out and it does say Goldsmith's Library. So there's a sort of humour attached to this and there's also a humour in what goes next to something else like the brush next to the solidified donut on the one, two, three, fourth shot shelf down. You can also see some notes that people left behind because when it started to get going they actually did start to tell me what they'd taken. At that stage they were only telling me what they'd taken and I weren't even considering what they were thinking of giving back, but they were thank you notes. So offered here, juxtapositioned against the historically and culturally revered library context, the new categorised and rearranged objects, very important to make them enticing, evoke the beginnings of a reappropriated transformative journey of stuff. And this business about putting stuff on shelves, first of all, that changes the idea of what stuff is, and then changing it again uh, because it's in a, a library, a culturally revered status, offers the opportunity to reinterpret stuff, re reappropriate it, rethink what we can do with it. Uh, yeah, as a provocation of reassessments of our taken for grantedness in our daily lives, our daily habits, our everydayness. I think actually because it's all set out in this way, it actually attacks us visually and as I say a, a snapshot, but also it makes us really think about what we're throwing out. So the visualness of it all and the fact that it's 
of our everyday habits. I'm hoping we'll create, through this socially engaged art, a reconsideration and perhaps a change of attitudes and a psychological shift. In other words, what I'm trying to say is that the work is layered and you receive it as you wish. And you can unlayer it and unpick it at the seams as you wish. It's not dogmatic, it's just there for the taking in relation to a critical approach to this work. It's also uh, participatory and this participation of taking stuff away from it actually I think through the doing of it, through the taking away of it and creating hopefully something useful with it actually makes us rethink in a physical way. A bit like children when they're learning to play, when they play with cardboard boxes, for example, and they get inside of them and they use them as cars or motor vehicles. This transformative journey um, is offered in this context to make us rethink. As you become the participant, you're actually doing something. And it's getting us back into a playful state to question who we are. Probably a playful state is a really good place to be and that's where artists are when they're creating work as well by the way so this playful state encourages us to think hopefully in this work outside the boxes outside the normal consumer habits of who we are I've bleached out this image because I think it made me think at least about where we're going and the dullness of our life if we can if we continue in the way that we are I'm hoping that um, uh, this visual representation actually, actually evokes the idea of consumerism in its negative sense. Take from it what you will. This is an alternative library, broaches possibilities to reconsider such pertinent issues, such pertinent pressing issues as what we throw away and why we throw it out. This is really interesting for me. I was asked to go to Greenwich University to speak about um, the Living Taking Given Back Library and also to show it. And I showed um, the library there, but also they asked me to give a lecture. I thought, what can I do? What can I do to make it real for people to reconsider what they throw out? And not only as an individual, but as a community. So I asked everybody to stand up in a lecture theatre and hold hands and close their eyes and think about what they wanted to buy next. And what they were going to buy next, okay, it might give them temporary happiness, but what is the quality of that happiness if they throw it away after use and buy something else to replace it? So it questions what happiness is and perhaps we shouldn't be looking for, I'm suggesting, consumer happiness, maybe a different type of contentment might be more applicable to the new age that we're moving into in terms of caring for our environment. Um, so how perhaps could this stuff be reclaimed, revalued, reappropriated, reused, re-ideas, indeed transformed? Here you can see again one of the little notes that someone's left behind. And you can see that I've um, rearranged arranged the shelves, I should say, um, in a curated way. And also that looks like a death mask there, so it's put there particularly to think about our future, perhaps. <laughs> Getting a bit dark here. But um, with a saw handle and a blanket, with a brush by the side of it, uh, light fittings. They're all put together here to entice us to use. So... It is a giving and it's a taking back project and the giving is it's there to give, to give to you how you or whatever you do with it, but also to give back. So more than just a document of what you've done with it, whether it's um, given to someone else, this discarded piece of stuff that you've taken from the shelf, perhaps you've given it as a present, perhaps you've made it into an artwork, perhaps you've used it in a completely different way, you've recycled it yourself. That's a document. Take a document of it, put the document back as reference 
on the library shelf. And then from that, also consider, as I was finding out, that the shelves, a lot of stuff was um, going but not coming back. Consider finding something discarded to put back, some waste piece that was going to throw out, to give someone else the idea of what they might do with it, just in the same way as you've found something on the shelves to reuse. So this is the giving back, and you're not only giving back of what you've found to the shelves, you're giving back to inspire others. It's a community we're dealing with and we're working together to sort this problem out. Visually as well, what can be done with um, stuff, stuff found, items found, and so how they're set together becomes interesting as an art and photographic project in its own right. So I was very interested in the different textures and how they're set against one another. Through this giving back, the essential return is directly connected to its communal use. The alternative library may be thought of as a cycle, a flow back to community, suggesting the idea of respect, responsibility and commitment to the environment. That's not only to ourselves, I feel, but also to the community as a whole. So this idea of respect and how we respect ourselves and how we're dealing with what we throw out, I think becomes really interesting in relation to its hiddenness. Because I think once you throw thing, something out, you don't want it in your own backyard, you want it somewhere else. And someone else is going to deal with it that you might clean or something that you might not even respect very much. How about if we change that relationship of the people that get rid of it for us, if we respect them as well, and by implication, change how we think about what we're throwing out and the amount that we're throwing out and the people that have to clean it up on our behalf, how much they're getting paid for it, whether they're in the job or not. How about reconsidering the whole aspect of this throwing out of stuff and where it's going and the landfills that it's ending up on, all of our responsibility. Again, the composition of stuff and the variety of it was truly remarkable. I never expected to find so much out. I think I'm a gleaner. I think I'm someone that feels guilty of what other people throw out. And as I say, curiosity driven. And it all led to this living, taking and giving back library. Interestingly enough, um, one of the students actually taught on Saturdays um, a group of kids as an art workshop and she took the straws and she used the straws with the kids in the art workshop to make things. She also used other things from Lim Taking Back Library to make things with the kids and it was very interesting to see for her anyway, what kids did with recycled material. It seems that they're very good at it because they're so good at play and they don't have any formatted ideas about what is rubbish and what isn't. And I think that's really interesting too because actually as adults, maybe we need to get rid of these ideas of thinking about what is rubbish and how we can re reuse it, re reappropriate re it. And I'm thinking that we do need to step out of those boxes of formatting and conditioning about what rubbish is to reconsider our taken for granted habits and to get into perhaps a type of playful mode. I'm not sure if there's language for it, but I say a playful mode in relation to what we can do. Let's just break the barriers of our conditioned thinking about what rubbish is and rethink its use, not only in a recycled way, but in a way that actually changes it for it to the extent that we actually don't want to be enticed by consumerism and completely think about how we're sucked into images, wrapping paper and all sorts of different things that actually add to our carbon input. 
Dear participants, having chosen a piece of stuff and made use of it, a photograph documenting its trans transformation is to be returned to the library. The photo becomes an archive for future reference, germinating new ideas, helping others to rethink. So, participants, please uh, reconsider um, that you become the artwork in this work through the doing of it. It's thrown over to you and you take hold of it and use it as you will. Uh, again, another image of um, just the rich variety of stuff. Phenomenal. Oh, and some of the plastic bottles there, I actually took off the shelves and put, I found a whole load of them, put on everybody's individual um, desk for them to reuse, to propel the use of the library, for them to reuse these recycled bottles, special bottles given by the student union that I'd found lying around, um, to uh, use tap water rather than buy bottled water. And it is a rule, in a sense, to actually replenish the shelves and replenish the shelves in relation to a found object, not something that you've uh, bought and you give us a, a present, although this is a present. This is a found, discarded piece that you're not going to use anymore, that someone else might use anymore. It's found or it's, it could even be found in the skip or anywhere in a rubbish bin. It doesn't matter. Moving the work on um, more than this, I decided that I wanted to put it in a library. It was a library. It needed to go in a library. Goldsmith's library seemed right because all the stuff that I'd found was actually on Goldsmith's campus. So every time I set up the Living, Taking and Giving Back library, there's a new lot of stuff to put on, into it. And this library was really interesting because it was a wider catchment that would have the opportunity to use it and it was set in the foyer of the library. So the security guards weren't very far from this and in terms of the usage of this library it was interesting because some people actually took and didn't give back. Some maybe didn't were confused about how it would work. Some seemed to be quite cynical and the guitar that you see at the top left actually someone wanted it and they wanted to just leave a cash receipt for it. Somehow this didn't equate in my mind. It was almost like they were taking this as a joke. I see it as a rather, although playful in its use, rather, well, it's serious. And I rather got irritated that uh, people just take in that way and suggest that, oh, bit like a consumer, I've got this at a bargain price and I'm only going to leave as little as possible for its return. It suggested an individualism that actually I think we're all tapped into, conditioned into and thinking more about ourselves rather than the bigger picture of what we're doing to the environment. So the fact that someone was actually thinking about this was actually in, in this way and I say using the library in a cynical way became interesting to me because it's almost like one could see how we were conditioned into consumerism in a very serious way that just dealt with ourselves. And that was actually all part of the learning process of what would happen with this living, taking and giving back library. So I had to change my way of thinking slightly about how it was used. The security guard couldn't stop some of the stuff being taken. Uh, but uh, there you go. Maybe that's how we think about um, taking and not giving back. Not all people were thinking in this way. Some were very happy to not only give back, but actually leave pieces of artwork there as well. Here you'll see more closely the reference section where people would leave document of not only who they'd taken, their emails, who, their names, their emails, but also um, putting things back in the filing system. You can see just on the right lower section in an old-fashioned filing system of what they'd done with the work that they'd taken, what they'd done with the piece that they'd taken, uh, and also what they'd given back. 
a plastic piece of tubing, two rubber bands around it, it became a vase. You'll see this on the um, Goldsmiths um, site, by the way, underneath my name, Margaret Jennings Goldsmiths, the Living Taking Gimback Library, because there's a blog there that can be added to. Um, and here at a major gallery was, in London, um, efforts from the Living Taking Gimback Library that I'd set up next to it, a type of sculpture, the plinth was also there to use, to um, be recycled on, and it was interesting to me to add the bits of stuff that were on the shelves to see what could be done with them in a mishmash of stuff and what textural shapes would come out of it and how photographically that could become really quite interesting and lead you into the sculpture in different ways. And it was like a piece of work that was being recorded in an old-fashioned way. And this silver piece, sorry, gold piece of paper that I'd found became reused and reused in different ways. It became used again at um, Peckham Space um, in Peckham. And here you see it attached to tubing. In Bristol, at Bristol University, through the Student Union Green Project um, conference, I was asked to set up the Living Taking and Giving Back Library. I did this with a team of three, and we walked around Bristol for a day, and this is what I found. In relation to health and safety issues, um, all the stuff that was dirty, and I don't pick up dirty stuff, but let's say tarnished in some sort of way, um, I had to rinse out wash out and disinfect for health and safety reasons. Um, and also, as you can see, the, the shelving itself is set on cardboard boxes. So these were also all found. What's amazing, actually, I don't know if you've come across this, is what people actually throw out and that can be taken to some sort of charity shop. And down on the lower left there, you can see a pair of kids' Wellington boots. What a shame someone didn't take them to the recycle, thought of taking them to the recycle shop. Maybe they didn't have time. But uh, perfectly good um, kids' boots. Gloves. I'm a gardener. I do an eco haven on um, the campus here. I'm always looking for gloves to use because the foxes run off with my gardening gloves. So even gloves can find a single gloves can find a, a use. I wanted to lay all those uh, beer cans together because they could be played as a musical instrument, as can that uh, bicycle wheel. Um, so that was a very interesting weekend at Bristol University at a conference. And as I say, Bristol is a green capital, uh, but still, of course, all of this stuff was found, and that's just a short, a small snapshot of what's found in one day. And it gets to be interesting for me anyway to look at the minutiae of what we're finding out, the very small bits that all add to the landfill and actually accumulate phenomenally and uh, set, but set next to one another. They sort of become interesting in a different way. All of these bits, by the way, um, were used to make... Um, instruments, recycled instruments for an orchestrated waste procession that I hold every year in Deptford. Here, looking more closely into packaging, and it was interesting because these labyrinths, these cavities and stuff, are ripe for kids to play with, and that's exactly what did happen when I set it up at this gallery that actually was a photographic shop and for the first time I really launched it, MMX Gallery, as um, an uh, art gallery in Deptford X Fringe, which is um, a major fantastic festival in Deptford every year. People were enticed to this exhibition by the sheer nature of what was in the shop windows and it was great. So many people came out, what's this? They're so used to seeing nice stuff in shop windows. They're very curious. It doesn't quite look like um, a charity shop, although people, I think, came in and thought it might be. Some people, anyway, a few people. Um, it looks something a little bit different 
Um, anyway, so inside this um, this shop that became an art gallery were globes, world globes that I'd made out of recycled material. And in them, anybody that came into the shop could throw different things inside them. So I had one globe for plastic bottles, one globe for clothes, one globe for food waste. And I also had the Living Taking Give Back Library. And they were almost like walking into a landfill. And actually, you don't see it in this photo, but I'd also made another world globe that was split in half to sit outside the doorway so that when people walked through, they walked through the world globe split in half. And set on the high street as it was, people that went by could throw their discarded material into it. So people actually walked through a world globe of waste in through question marks of what we're doing with it into other world globes of waste and the Living Taking Gimbet Library. And in this um, gallery space, children came and it was really interesting to see how they interacted with the, the library there, immediately got involved with it and were only too happy to give back to it as well. Uh, immediately in the play zone and couldn't stop them from wanting to reappropriate the stuff on the shelves. It's great to watch kids and see what they do with stuff. We can learn a lot from them, I feel. I got so many clothes donated and given to this um, library that I took them all to a recycle place in Deptford, which was actually not just recycle, it was a clothes exchange set up. And I took back from this uh, exchange other clothes that I put back on the um, library shelves. Again, it's reappropriating waste to make it look interesting for people to actually look at stuff in a different way and can be hung in all sorts of different ways and maybe to use sunlight as well to stream in through onto the um, library and if you need any help with this let me know uh, because uh, it really can be quite visually interesting. This is the first of the orchestrated waste processions and leading from MMX Gallery you could see how people were actually walking through and this was a busy high street on a Saturday playing their instruments and we took it with me conducting, play, using bits of plastic to conduct with through Deptford, Deptford High Street on a Saturday where I'd also hired a market stall where I'd set up another Living Taking Gimbak Library and we were playing the instruments. We stopped at the market stall that I'd set up and started singing and I changed the words of Louis Armstrong's song Oh What a Wonderful World to Oh, oh What a Rubbish World. The market stall holders really liked it and uh, people joined on the way. This is actually in the marketplace and we moved on through singing this song until we got to a park where I'd set up another world globe made out of, appropriately I think, uh, piping that I'd found laying around uh, because there's so much water waste. And we walked around playing our instruments, singing Oh What a Rubbish World we've created, slinging our stuff into the world globe and even getting our head inside. This is all to do with participation and through the doing of it, taking it to our inner core of feeling about who we are in, and where we're going in relation to the world we're creating. The human spirit needs places where nature has not been rearranged by the hand of man. And this led me to a plastic garden. All the plastics here are found, recycled and discarded. And I'd found them all on campus. I started up the hands-on ecology, bring back the bees, butterflies and insects to the university gardening society. No skills necessary. 
but I was also finding a whole load of bright coloured plastics. How interesting I thought to set up a plastic garden and through these uh, through this setup to actually make weeds grow, put weeds and other found plants there just to drive home I felt um, how we're enticed by colours, but how weeds and plants, if you want to call them weeds, they are plants, are going to overtake all of this stuff. But what, in fact, are we leaving behind on landfills? And to drive home the point, the found pieces of um, reflective plastic perspex I layered behind. So we are reflected back in what we're creating. That was the idea behind it. And from the bins and buckets that have been thrown out, I started to catch rainwater. So this is another way that I actually started to reappropriate stuff. And all of these buckets lead into other buckets to save rainwater so that I could put on the um, garden that I was creating, the eco haven. And again, create little homes using found stuff for the insects but also for solitary bees and also for ants. And I've got, at the moment, a fantastic ants' nest um, just to watch it and see how they actually create domes and spaces in an in, um, undulating soft way is really quite incredible, very stimulating. But on this um, piece of uh, campus that I was given there was stuff that was growing and it was growing to waste and I started to cultivate the rhubarb there and without any charge without any transport without any packaging donate it to the Natura cafe that's an orga organic cafe on the campus and if you ever come to Goldsmiths do indulge yourself with rhubarb crumble and you know where it comes from uh, and it's it's a great feeling to actually not only um, grow stuff but, and to give it back, but actually at the end of it to have a banquet together and um, to share stuff with the community. And that's one of the projects that I do as well, to create a banquet out of what we grow. And it's a way of the... Um, somehow or other, whether it's through a balcony garden, whether it's through a bit of land that you've given, a bit of a little bit of a pot or something where you can grow something, share it with others and perhaps eat it together or grow it for the bees because we need more nectar rich plants for disappearing bee population and to share together in this way so it's a way of giving back all grown on um, organic land that I'd created but also permaculture, um, permaculture in a permaculture way and there's another way that's really interesting through what I call Doro Dango, which is a Japanese way that's created by Fukuoka, which actually you just put a seed inside um, uh, an earth ball and throw it and let nature take its own course. Uh, here are other things that I'm growing. We grow them now on an allotment that we've got on the campus, but also in the Eco Haven through the Gardening Society. This is another student's piece of work he created um, a nappy, a diaper, and it's all made from um, plastics, as you can see. And these plastics, after he'd finished his work, were up for being reused again. And I've gathered these together and I'm creating a dress out of them. In another piece of artwork, I think this work gets to be interesting, is um, on a, a large piece of recycled material, I put a photograph of a supermarket. And this supermarket leads off, as far as I'm concerned, into oblivion. And on either side is all the things that we might be enticed by. And it's like a lonely road that we go down, I feel, of discussing what's um, encouraged us to use stuff, how we're going to use it, where we're going to put it. And to what extent is it going to give us any um, life um, usage and what are we going to do with it afterwards? Those coat hangers, by the way, are something that I um, found discarded again, put on the uh, living library and used in an exhibition just to drive home the point that we don't even need to use 
pegs in the walls to actually hang things up on. But this all went with an art exhibition called Super Waste Co, the backside of waste, and these are the images from them. There's an emptiness, I consider, with consumerism. And what, in fact, are we putting in our metal baskets in the supermarket? And I sometimes look in the supermarkets to see actually what people are buying for their kids to eat, and it seems to me a lot of it isn't very good food either. Sometimes you hear kids say to their parents, oh, what's that? And they're not even aware that that might be a pineapple. They've never seen what a pineapple looks like. They've only had it perhaps from a tin, or even now from a plastic container. So to drive home the point, I continued with this uh, and people would come in like it's a supermarket, they would have stuff with them and they could put it in the appropriate um, objects that I'd found again, like the discarded microwave, the discarded, um, the discarded toilet holder, the discarded uh, toaster, and put the, the appropriate stuff in there. It's almost like this stuff is regurgitating stuff not the luxury stuff that we find but the stuff the backside of waste as i call it in this image with a plastic washing up bowl uh what's put there of course is the amount of money that we're spending and not only spending through our pay packets on what we buy and what we waste but also the amount that it's costing the environment not only for ourselves but also for the next generation Will Fairy manage to deal with it all in our fantasy world that we live in, in consumerism? And even if we try and wash it all up and put it somewhere else, it's still got to be recycled and it still costs. A fridge regurgitating stuff, the stuff that comes from our waste, the microwave that deals with stuff, and a computer that actually um, deals with all sorts of stuff, that when I asked computer specialists in, oh, what are these? What are these cables for? Nobody seemed to know what they were for. Um, Deptford X Fringe, Artlix again. And this is uh, another, as you see from kids' uh, visuals here on the right-hand side, something that they created after they were participants in another orchestrated waste procession. At the bottom of this image you can see an exhibition that was put on from waste materials that I set up in the New Cross Learning Voluntary Library that actually housed the new the Living Taking Give Back Library that I used with kids. And the workshops actually allowed them to express their feelings on the days out. We took them in an old double-decker bus to the seaside, some of them never seen the sea before. When they came back, they had the opportunity to actually use the Living Tech and Gimbat Library to actually make stuff with, to express their feelings. Remembering in this multicultural society, especially here in Deptford, New Cross, some kids and their parents don't even speak English. So it was a way of them voicing their materials through found materials and through the Living Tech and Gimbat Library, but also the families themselves brought in stuff to donate to these shelves. It was very community driven, very family orientated. And this is how it was set up in the New Cross Learning Library. Very discarded stuff, uh, some of the stuff people um, came in with. But moreover, um, you can see how the kids muck around with it and get excited by the use of it. Um, and it's a way of teaching teaching not only the kids but the families themselves all about recycled material and what can be done with them. This was the end product of the exhibition and even using the backs of envelopes as well to express how they felt about the double-decker bus journey that you can see in the centre there, slightly to the left, and the experiences they had. You can open up these little windows to experience more feelings about the experiences they had on this day out. Um, again, as it's set up in the New Cross Learning Library and one kid teaching another kid there how to use it. 
how the double-decker bus was created from waste, appropriately using a tape bag there, and um, all of it hands-on and learning through using different materials. Close up of the double-decker bus and the kids interacting with it in relation to what they've created in this workshop. And behind you can see the exhibition of their creation, which actually I got into Deptford Fringe for them. So there was a kudos in relation to this. These kids' works actually got into a festival. This is um, also the Living Taking Gimbat Library, set up with different stuff that was found just in the vicinity. Normally it has to be set up just within the stuff that's found in the local vicinity. And this is the orchestrated waste procession using stuff from that library with more families and kids involved. And actually kids start to use not only the recycled stuff in terms of the sounds they make walking along the street, they start to play it on street furniture and make all sorts of different sounds with it. Um, and when they came back to the library they made artwork in relation to it so they gave back to others as a document of what they were doing on this orchestrated waste procession. So from the beginning you can see how I first set it up um, in my studio how it turned out on its journey to the kids' work from um, drawing their experiences on the orchestrated waste procession. I took a year out and I went to an earthquake zone. I went to Japan and I had uh, very moving experiences, literally there being in an earthquake. And I started to write a diary on the backs of the um, envelopes that I took with me. Um, of recycled envelopes and this is what came out from day one. The, the now is different, an earthquake any minute, sense of stability is changing. I think that relates to um, climate change as well because uh, some of these earthquakes now seem to be caused by the climate change. Anything can happen and anything can happen to us now. On four shifting plates in Japan, how will it shift? In it, together though, as a community, make the best of here and now of life. It's almost like me hoping to create some sort of psychological shift in the way we think about our environment. And being right on top of it there in Japan, I was thinking, crikey, let's rethink everything now. What with Fukushima? At the Living Taking Given Back Library um, situation there. I also thought I'd create an archive, an archive of the amazing voluntary work that Kath and Jill, as you see in the centre there, are doing in this library. And these bits that I gathered of comments and posters, saving them, putting them all together, created an archive. And this archive created an exhibition called Alive Archivers Now, and this is the exhibition set within Goldsmiths Library. And Goldsmiths Library, Archive Library, housed this very recently, um, 2016, and I made banners, banners of the work through the library closures of using the posters that have been created on marches through um, demonstrating against library closures, but also against um, putting them, setting the archive as a celebration against um, what was happening in that voluntary library and the new seven-year lease that they'd got. But also because they'd been nominated to the Love Festival, I nominated them and they've got in, amazingly, as change makers. But it's all using found and recycled material that I gathered together. And here you can see a poster on the left talking about um, the cuts in library closures that won't allow people, if we, cl we close these library spaces, won't allow people to come together to do stuff, do the sort of stuff that I was doing, the living, taking, giving back library there. On the right you see a banner I also made out of recycled material, that's recycled wood, but also all the comments that I've found of the library as a celebration. This is me getting, amazingly, the Green Gown Award and deciding not to buy a dress because I didn't know where it was made, but rather to, um, in some sweatshop somewhere, but how about making a dress? I decided to make a dress of rubbish, managed to get up onto the stage in this dress. 
and uh, got the award wearing um, a dress made out of plastic bags. When I got down from the stage, a fashion designer said to me, I really like that dress, taking photos on me, and I decided then and there that I thought I'd become a conceptual um, fashion designer, and how about um, creating a fashion walk show made out of recycled material. So uh, I'm at the moment making dresses out of rubbish, and if you want me to show that catwalk show at your university or somewhere, just let me know. Um, indeed, if you want the Living, Taking and Giving Back Library there, as I say, just let me know. And this is uh, the uh, dress itself held up to light and I think looking quite beautiful. So if there's any questions about this, don't hesitate to contact me. Uh, my email is margaret, M-A-R-G-A-R-E-T, kokoro, K-O-K-O-R-O, arts, A-R-T-S, all one word, at gmail.com. And as I say, you can also find it on the Goldsmiths website, just or on Google. Google Margaret Jennings Goldsmiths Living Taking Gimback Library, and there you'll see more information about this project, but also a blog if you want to add something to it. If you want to send me um, images of what you've created out waste stuff, please do, please don't hesitate. Um, some of the questions that I've had asked are in relation to um, how it was set up. As I say, first of all, set up in my studio, and I felt a sort of guilt about what I was finding in skips. I wanted to create this so that people could reuse it, and that was the first stage, and it was only me gathering the stuff. But then, as it progressed to Bristol, then there were a team of us, that's three, um, gathering the stuff. So this library can be used as you please, just one or a couple, but do contact me if you want any more further information on that. Um, and then... Uh, I was going to say that um, everything has been made and discarded. I think that's a really important point of the project. It's not new stuff that's put there. The duration of the project depends on what's available in terms of space. So it could be in terms of the studio uh, space as it ended up for my assessment. Actually, it was for only one week, but it had been working towards it over a period of time. So the library can be at different stages and last over a much longer duration. Um, anyway, each time it sends, sets it up, it does depend on the space and the allowance of space. So finding a good space um, is really quite difficult, and it is difficult at university to find spaces. But let me tell you, it's not impossible. Um, uh, in terms of health and safety, don't forget that... Um, uh, don't pick up stuff that might be dangerous, of course. But also, you can wash it out and clean it yourself, as I did, and then put it on the shelves. Think about participation. Um, the question of participation can work in many different ways, and i just give you a very good example. Someone picked up a chess piece from um, the Living, Taking, Giving Back Library, and they put it in their pocket, and they carried it about in their pocket for a long while. But every time they put their hand in their pocket, they remembered something about their childhood. They remembered how they learnt chess from their parents. And that led them to giving back to the library in a different way, through um, documenting their memory of how they learnt about stuff. So it doesn't have to be necessarily physical. It could be something that inspires the next user through use of that living, taking and giving back library through a memory. Thank you very much for joining me um, on this library, living, taking and giving back library journey. And you're most welcome to any information that I might be able to offer you. Just don't hesitate to contact me. Thank you very much.